me what's going on for you and how can I help? Um, so currently what I'm doing is uh, I'm wrapping up my personal statement. Um, I've kind of shifted my focus a little bit on uh, on which law, um, like it's which discipline and law um, I decided to focus on. Um, at first, it started out of business litigation and business law because that's kind of what my underground background was. Um, but since then, uh, I've realized that I've always kind of had a passion for environmental law. Um, so, uh, you know, kind of being pushed into the business aspect from an, under degree, or from an undergrad uh, standpoint, um, I realized that there were certain outside influences that were kind of influencing my decision on um, particularly what discipline of law I wanted to, to study. Um, so I guess what I would need some help in is just kind of really honing in my personal statement to, um, to, to display my desire to you know, become an environmental lawyer. Um, and it's a little bit difficult for me because, like I said, from having so many outside influences uh, and like a general background in business, um, how to hone in and directly uh, make myself more appealing as an applicant to uh, an environmental law program. So any help on that would be greatly appreciated. Gotcha. Sure. So what is the biggest or most impactful experience you've had that um, influenced your decision to pursue environmental law? So uh, growing up, um, I was kind of a couple kid. Um, you know, I did have like a lot of, uh, a lot of family issues and stuff. Um, but at the end of the day, like he doesn't, um, I, uh, I made some questionable, um, oh? yeah, we're there. Um, yeah, so I made, um, some pretty, pretty rash decisions as a young adult. Um, I ended up getting into legal trouble of my own. Um, and, uh, eventually I, uh, I found rock climbing, um, with one of my, uh, my mentors, um, growing up like in high school. And I remember the first time I went outside, that was probably one of the most impactful and profound things um, that have happened that kind of changed me completely 180. Um, and not only like in that unique, you know, one time experience, it's like every single time I go outside and enjoy the environment, um, it's like I just, it's the same thing over and over and over. Um, and as I grow up, I'm starting to realize that, you know, these are places that we need to protect. Um, but I also understand, you know, um, how as a resource they can be used as a commodity. Um, but that boundary needs to be understood. And so just any, like climbing outside, um, climbing outside is definitely something that's impacted my, uh, my desire and ambition, you know, not only protect the environment, but also stand up for the places that have made such an impact on my life and who I am today. I love it. This is all great material. And so I would just keep asking yourself, questions around this. And so I'll ask you one right now as an example, which would be like, what's the most difficult experience you encountered while rock, rock climbing? Um, so besides the entire sport not being uh, easy, um, there's been a couple of times where uh, I have done a project route. Um, and basically throughout that, you know, you start to climb and for some reason it just doesn't line up that session. Maybe the weather's not good, maybe the mental game's not good. Maybe physically you're like capable of doing it at that time. Um, so there's actually a, a route in, uh, in, in, in Austin, Texas. Um, it's my project route. It's on a, on a wall called the prototype wall, um, which eventually ended up uh, falling and collapsing up the entire place. Um, so that project has been the hardest thing um, I've ever had to work through. Because the first time I climbed it was one of the first times I've ever climbed outside. Um, and I remember it being way out of my level. Um, and uh, I remember setting my sights on it and just trying it. And then uh, I remember one time, one of my mentors um, that originally got me into climbing was Tim Rose. He ends up falling off of my project route, um, trying to show me the data. And he, uh, he broke his, like, his right leg and uh, fractured or punctured, uh, punctured along with just some broken ribs. Um, so that kind of kind of, uh, you know, <laughs> kind of irked me a little bit. And I didn't get on that wall for a while. And uh, by the time I got my mental game back and by the time Tim was ready to, to help me through that a little bit, uh, the wall had already collapsed and it was no longer there. So I kind of lost my chance for that project. Out. That's probably one of the hardest things to see my mentor try to show me how to climb this particular route. And then having my mentor, you know, put himself in a pretty serious harm and then to uh, eventually realizing like I'm never going to get a chance to find it again. 
Sure. Wow. Yeah, that sounds like quite a story. And then I guess the last thing I would ask you is what traits do you think relate to both rock climbing and law school in terms of what, what you've learned about yourself, how you've grown? Okay. Um, so besides the, the sheer determination uh, that it takes you to rock climbing, I also see uh, that's something that, you know, can directly transform or transpire into uh, a degree in law. Um, you know, you have to find the things that you're passionate about, the things that you can defend, um, whether in court or whether when it comes to litigation or stuff like that, um, or even in legislation. Um, it's a constant battle. Um, in rock climbing, you know, one of the things that we like to say is that we're adaptable. Um, so we're able to see things from various perspectives and analyze how each one of those perspectives kind of play out in the long run and which is the good step moving forward right here and how that affects the, the playing ground or the wall um, moving forward. Um, the perseverance, um, the determination and grit, the, uh, and also being, being comfortable in uncomfortable positions. Um, that's something that uh, always gets good. You know, when it comes to negotiations and stuff, um, you know, like being put in uncomfortable positions is something that a lot of time I think it's taught me how to, to overcome my inner thought, you know, and just kind of really hone in and be confident, um, and firm, firm in my decisions. Um, but also flexible in my execution, you know, being able to adapt as a uh, certain thing come at me from, from different areas. Yeah. I love it. Well, I haven't told you anything right now. I mean, all I've done is ask you a couple of questions. You have a ton of material, a ton of, sh a ton to share. You're very articulate and clearly passionate about this. I would say just write down everything we've been talking about today. Everything that you've just said to me, write all of that down and you have a good draft for your personal statement. It's a rough draft and you might have to rearrange things and modify, make edits, cut a bit, add more, revise multiple times, but you already have the material. Mm -hmm. One thing I would clarify at the outset is that the rock climbing is outdoors though, because at least like in, for those in major cities like myself, I'm in New York. When I hear rock climbing, I think a rock climbing gym indoors. And to me, that's like, that has no connection to the environment. So if you could just clarify that for those who are in major metropolitan areas, that would be helpful. But other than that, I think you have the makings of a great personal statement. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, that's great to hear. Yeah. Um, it, it's a little difficult because like everyone that I, um, like my family and the people that I tend to surround myself with, um, haven't really, like the people I hang out with that climb, you know, they're okay with being climbers, you know, for the rest of their life. Um, as a first gen college student, you know, like this isn't something I can talk to about my family. Um, or with my family about. Um, so just knowing that, you know, this can, like what, I, what I've been doing, like what I've been running in my head actually kind of makes sense moving forward. You know, it's really, really reassuring to do. Yeah, I, I genuinely appreciate it. Awesome. Yeah. So just like I said, write all of this down, what you've just been saying to me. Of course, I'm recording this for the YouTube channel. And so you could just re listen to the video, re watch the video, and write that all down too, because you've got it. You've got what you need. Okay. Yeah, awesome. Great. But before we sign off, Adrian, what would you say is the biggest insight you got from our call today? Um, if you're genuinely passionate about it, um, you just have to make it work. Um, you know, this is, for me, um, while it's something that's been out of my realm for even understanding um, for my, pretty much my entire life, it's always something that I thought was too far out of my reach. Um, but in this talk with you, I realized uh, that just because uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense, um, things do make sense. You know, you just have to articulate it and you have to sometimes you have to say it out loud. Um, there's people who are like minded um, and someone who, uh, who understands the end goal um, as well as, you know, the current trials and situations that we have to face before that. Um, and again, yeah, thank you for that. Awesome. My pleasure. Well, Please keep in touch and let me know if you need anything as you move forward. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.